Lesson 4.2, Angles and Their Measures. In this section, our goal is to be able to convert between radians and degrees. Yes, that's what I said, radians and degrees. Up to this point in your entire mathematical career, you've probably only ever used one way of measuring angles, and that's degrees. Yet, just like with units of length, units of weight, units of volume, there are many different units that you can use based on entirely different lines of reasoning. And with degree or with uh, angle measures, it's no different. A degree is one way of measuring an angle. A radian is a completely different way of measuring an angle. And as far as mathematicians are concerned, radians are far superior to degrees. And then we're also going to be able to find coterminal angles at the end of the lesson. So let's start with the concept of how we measure angles. As I said, you can measure an angle in either the unit called a degree or a completely different unit called a radian. Now we've been using degrees since elementary school, so my expectation is that you know exactly what a degree is. So if I asked you, hey, what's the definition of a degree, what would you say? And of course my guess is you probably have no idea what the definition of a degree is. You've just been using it all along without any real understanding of what it is. Well, the definition of a degree is 1 360th of a circle. Yes, that's the formal definition of a degree. It is defined to be exactly 1 360th of a circle. Because, of course, how many degrees are in a circle? 360. So how much is one degree? Well, it's 1 360th of a circle. Now, hopefully you kind of see, no pun intended, but some circular logic here. A circle is 360 degrees because a degree is 1360th of a circle. So basically a degree is what it is because that's what it is. There's no mathematical reason why it has to be the number 360. Basically it comes down to the ancient Babylonians who decided that 360 was a really pretty number and thus they went with it. No other reason other than that and over millennia we've kind of stuck with it. And to make it even more confusing, just like a mile can be broken into 1,760 yards, which a yard can then be broken into 3 feet, and of course a foot can be broken into 12 inches, it's a complete haphazard system that makes absolutely no sense with no relation from one unit to the other. Degrees can be broken down into smaller sizes as well. Whereas one circle is equal to 360 degrees, one degree can actually be broken into a minute. 60 of them to be exact, one degree is equivalent to 60 minutes. So just like a foot is a subunit of a yard, a minute is a subunit of a degree. A minute can also be broken down further, and hopefully you already know this one, one minute is equal to 60 seconds. So notice the notation. We use this notation right here, this uh, superscript circle represents a degree, a tick mark represents a minute, and a double tick mark represents a second. In general, we call this degrees, minutes, seconds, or abbreviated DMS. So one degree is equal to 60 minutes, one minute is equal to 60 seconds. So if one degree is equal to 60 minutes, how many seconds are in a degree? Well, for every minute, there's 60 seconds. So if I were to pull off this minute symbol and break it into one minute times 60, one minute is equal to 60 seconds, then 60 times 60 would be 3,600 seconds. So every degree includes 60 minutes, and every degree includes 3,600 seconds. This is going to be useful information because one of the things that we're going to need to do is if I give you a measurement in degrees, minutes, seconds, I really don't care about how many minutes and how many seconds. It's not incredibly useful for a lot of what the stuff that we're going to do. Just like if I told you that something is 4 feet 2 inches, that's nice. I really don't care that it's four feet and two inches. I either want to know how many inches is it or how many feet is it. Is it. When we're dealing with word problems and applications, we only want to have one unit at a time. So if I give you degrees, minutes, and seconds, we need to convert everything either to degrees or everything to minutes or everything to seconds. And I'm going to tell you right now, we're pretty much going to convert everything to degrees, at least until we figure out what a radian is. So let's start with an example. Here is a angle measurement, 45 degrees, 14 minutes, 32 seconds. Let's go ahead and convert from degrees, minutes, seconds to decimal form. This is a super easy process. It's such an easy process. We're not even going to do multiple examples on this. I'm just going to give you the one example. Uh, it will come up over and over again in your homework and throughout the rest of the uh, course kind of randomly. 
uh, but it's just a quick little manipulation, super easy. So if I know 45 degrees is already degree, I don't need to do anything with the 45. I want to convert everything to degrees, 45 is already a degree. 14 is in minutes, I just have to remember, well, how many minutes are in a degree? There are 60 minutes in a degree. That means 14 minutes is 14 sixtieths of a degree. Same thing with seconds. How many seconds are in a degree? Well, if there's 60 minutes, I'm sorry, if there's 60 seconds in a minute and 60 minutes in a degree, as we said a second ago, there are 3,600 seconds in a degree. So if I have 32 of them, I would say 32, 36 hundredths of a degree. Add it all together, in other words, type it in your calculator, we get 45.2422222 or two repeating degrees. So 45 degrees, 14 minutes, 32 seconds is equivalent to 45.242 degrees. Now another reason I'm not going to do multiple examples on this is because this was a waste of time that I just did. We can actually just type this straight into our calculator exactly as is and let the calculator do the work. 45 degrees, 14 minutes, 32 seconds. To find the degrees, minutes, and second symbols in your calculator, you're just going to need to go into the angle menu by hitting second apps. The second apps is the angle menu. This is what's going to pop up. Notice option one, that's the degree symbol. Option two, that's the minute symbol. Notice I do not see a second symbol in the angle menu. I have no idea why it's not there, but it's not for some reason. So to find the second symbol, it's actually over here. It's hidden with the plus sign. See that double tick mark right there? So in order to get the seconds, instead of hitting second, we'll hit alpha plus sign. So if we hit alpha plus sign, that gets us the second symbol, and then just hit enter. 45.242 repeating. Same answer that we got before. So anytime you have degrees, minutes, seconds, you can either convert it by hand like this, you'd still need a calculator, or just type it in exactly as you see it in the calculator using the angle menu uh, for degrees and minutes, and then the second symbol is down here, and we get our decimal answer. Now, just for kicks, we could also, for so, uh, if you for some reason wanted to, convert back to degrees, minutes, seconds. If I have my decimal version in the calculator, hey, notice DMS, that's degrees, minutes, seconds. Simply go back to the angle menu, option four, to convert back to degrees, minutes, seconds. Once I have the decimal in the calculator, just hit second, angle, option four, enter, enter one more time, and it converts it back to degrees, minutes, and seconds. There is absolutely no reason in this course that you'd ever need to do that, but in case you wanted to know, that's how you do it. So, degrees. Stupidest thing in the world. They make no mathematical sense. It's based on an arbitrary measurement by an, a long-dead civilization that we have just not been able to kick over millennia. A radian, on the other hand, has a precise mathematical definition based on mathematical logic. A radian is a ratio. It is the ratio of the arc length of a circle to its radius. So if I give you a circle and I measure out an angle, theta, that circle has a radius. That angle also cuts off a measure of the circle. We call that the arc length. We often use the letter S to represent arc length. The radian is the ratio of that arc length to the radius. Now, to the uninitiated, this might seem as arbitrary as picking 360 to represent the measure around a circle. But in fact, this makes much more sense because 360 is an arbitrary measurement. Might as well make it 300, might as well make it 200, might as well make it 427. But a radian, on the other hand, ties two measurements that already exist as part of the angle, the radius and the arc length, it ties those two measurements together that are already directly related to each other. The measure of the arc and the length of the radius are directly proportional to each other. If I make the radius smaller, the arc length gets smaller. If I make the radius bigger, the arc length gets bigger. So as long as the angle remains the same, the ratio between the arc length and the radius remain the same. Instead of basing an angle on how many 1 3 60th of a unit that you turn around, the measure of the angle is based on the distance around the circle that you travel. The bigger the circle, the bigger the radius, the bigger the arc length, yet the ratio would always stay the same. So the next thought is, if there's 360 degrees in a circle, how many radians are in a circle? Well, here would be one radian. I know this is one radian because both the radius and the arc length are A. If the ratio of arc length to the radius is the radian, 
then a to a would be one radian. So this would be exactly one radian. So if I take this slice and measure it all the way around the circle until I can't go any further, so here's one radian, two radians, three radians, four radians, five radians, six radians, and then I have this extra little sliver here, but it doesn't look like I can slice out the same size slice I've been slicing out all around. So I was able to get one, two, three, four, five, six radians, six full radians, and change. So how much change do I have? It seems, you know, with 360, everything was working out nice and neat. I was able to fit 360 exact degrees into a circle because, of course, it's designed to fit into a full circle. Radians aren't defined on how well things fit into a circle. Radians are defined based on what a radian is. A circle is just a byproduct. So let's think about this. How many radians do fit in a circle, though? I know I can fit six. I know I can fit a little bit more than six. It's definitely less than seven. How many exactly? So if I take my definition of a radian, theta equals the ratio of arc length to a radius, and I'm trying to fit into a full circle. So a full circle, the arc length of a full circle, well, there's another name for that. It's circumference. So to get a full circle, instead of saying just arc length, I can just say circumference. Circumference formula being 2 pi r. So if the arc length I'm using is 2 pi r, and I have to divide that by the radius, well, the radius and the radius are the same radius if I'm using the same circle. So the r's actually cancel out, which leaves us with exactly how many radians fit in a full circle. 2 pi radians. Remember, pi is 3.14-ish, so therefore 2 pi is 6.28-ish. So I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and then about 0.28-ish left over fit into a, a full circle. So 2 pi radians. Notice for degrees we use the little degree symbol. For radians the abbreviation is just RAD. 2 pi rad. 2 pi radians. Now I say that but I really don't mean it. RAD is an abbreviation for radian, but we actually very rarely use it. Because radians, to a mathematician, a radian is the default measurement. Degrees, it's only degrees if you're told it's a degree. If you're not told it's, it's a degree, then it's a radian. Since by default mathematicians always think in radians, you're actually going to not ever see RAD ever written down. It's always implied. If no measurement is, if no unit is given, then it's a radian. So, we now have established that a full circle has exactly 2 pi radians. I also know that a full circle has exactly 360 degrees. Therefore, we now can ha convert between degrees and radians by knowing when they're the same. We know that one full circle is both 2 pi radians and 360 degrees. So 2 pi radians is equal to 360 degrees. Now these are both even numbers, so let's divide them both by 2 to simplify things. So instead of saying 2 pi radians, how about 1 pi radian? So if divide the left by 2, let's divide the right by 2. So 1 pi is equal to 180 degrees. Pi radians is equal to 180 degrees. And we can go even a, a step further. How much is just 1 radian? Well if I divide by pi, that would give me 1 radian. If I would divide 180 by pi, that's not going to divide evenly, so I'll just leave it as 180 over pi. So 1 radian is equal to 180 degrees divided by pi. If I were to actually type that in a calculator, 180 divided by pi, it would come out to about 57 degrees. So let's take a step back to that picture we had before. 1 radian right here is exactly 57 degrees. So if I take this slice right here, 1 radian, 57 degrees. So what this gives us is a conversion factor. 1 radian is equivalent to 180 degrees over pi. So if I'm converting between radians and degrees, that conversion factor, 180 over pi, is going to be helpful information. And for that matter, I could turn it around. If I started back up here at pi radians and said, how much is 1 degree? Divide by 180, pi over 180 would equal 1 degree. So depending on whether you're going from degrees to radians or radians to degrees, you're going to either multiply by 180 over pi, or multiply by pi over 180. So let's look at a couple examples before I give you some examples to try on your own. Notice the first one it says 45 degrees. I want to convert from degrees to radians, so I'm either going to multiply by pi over 180 or 180 over pi. Now keep in your mind that 180 represents the degree, pi represents the radian. So if I want to convert from degrees to radians, that means I need to get rid of the degree symbol. I'm not going to get rid of that degree symbol by multiplying by a degree. 
to get rid of the degree symbol, I have to divide by a degree. Therefore, when I multiply, I want the 180 to be on the bottom. Pi would go on the top, 180 on the bottom. That way the degrees would cancel out, and you'd be left with pi representing a radian as your answer. So if I simplify this, 45 times pi over 180. Now this is a situation where you really need to be able to simplify this without a calculator. Grabbing a calculator for something as simple as, simple as this is a waste of your time. Force yourself to practice doing this in your head. 45 over 180. How many times does 45 go into 180? Well I know that 45 goes into 90 twice. I know that 90 goes into 180 twice as well. Therefore, 45 goes into 180 four times. So 45, 180, cancel out. You're left with a 4 on the bottom. In other words, pi over 4. So notice I don't write pi over 4 radians. I just wrote pi over 4. If it's a radian, you don't have to put the symbol. It's not wrong to say pi over 4 radians. It's just redundant. Just say pi over 4. Any mathematician will interpret that as a radian. So let's do it again. This time let's convert from radians to degrees. Notice it says 5 pi over 6. The fact that there's no degree symbol tells me that this is a radian. Also, the fact that there's a pi in there, although a radian does not have to be in terms of pi, it's typically a clue that it's a radian if it's in terms of pi. So 5 pi over 6, I want to get rid of the radian and turn it into a degree, so I want to cancel out the pi, I want to multiply in the degree, so that means the 180 would have to be on top. So first things first, those pi's would cancel out, symbolizing that the radians are canceling out. Keep in mind the pi does not itself represent the radian, the pi is just a signifier of a radian. So the pi cancels out, 6 goes into 18 three times, so if 6 goes into 18 three times, 18 cancels out and leaves 3, 3 times 5 is 15, put on the 0, 150 degrees. Notice I didn't need a calculator for that, I just did it in my head. Alright, here's three more for you to try. Go ahead and try these on your own, hit play when you're ready. So looking at the first one, 108 degrees, this is a degree, so we need to cancel out the degree, so 180 goes on the bottom. Let's just multiply it through, that would give me 108 pi over 180. I want to go ahead and simplify this. now. I could just type this in the calculator to simplify, but I want to stop relying on that crutch all the time. I want to go back to elementary school and learn to simplify this by hand. 108 and 180 are both even numbers, so I can cut them in half. 54 and 90. Still even, cut them in half. 90 becomes 45. 54 becomes 27. Both 27 and 45 are divisible by 9, so if I divide by 9, I get 5. If I divide by 9, I get 3. 3 and 5 are both prime numbers, so I can't reduce any further. 3 pi over 5. The next one is 13 pi over 10. If you haven't done this one on your own already, go ahead and pause and hit play when you're ready. Otherwise, let's go ahead and do it. 13 pi over 10. Notice there's no degree symbol, so this is a radian, meaning I need to convert from radians to degrees. I want to get rid of the radian. I want to leave it in degrees, so I'll put the 180 on top. Pi is going to cancel out right off the bat. The 10 and the 180 are going to cancel, at least the zeros are going to cancel, leaving me with 13 times 18. This would be a situation where I wouldn't expect you to be able to do 13 times 18 real quick in your head, although it shouldn't take too long to do it in your head, but you wouldn't be able to do it real quick is my guess. You could do it on pencil and paper, but as long as we're not using the calculator as a crutch, I'm okay with you using a calculator. So if you type it in the calculator 13 times 18, 234 degrees. So 13 pi over 10 radians is equivalent to 234 degrees. And the last one, 4. 4. Just 4. Not 4 pi, just 4. So is this a degree or a radian? Well remember, if I don't see a unit, then it's a radian. There's no unit given, there's no degree symbol given, therefore this is a radian. So to convert radians to degrees, multiply by 180 over pi. No real simplification I can do here, so feel free to just type it in the calculator. Unless, of course, you know, 18 times 4, I can do that in my head. 18 times 2 is 36. Double it again is 72. 720 over pi. Now keep in mind, this is now a degree, so technically there should be a degree symbol over here somewhere. So 720 over pi is your exact answer. It's an ugly answer though, so feel free to convert to decimal. You should get 229.183 degrees. Now let's talk about 
how we draw angles. We measure angles either in degrees or radians, preferably radians. The way we draw them is in something called standard position. Now, in geometry, when you drew an angle, you just drew two rays meeting at some corner point and called it an angle. Uh, that angle could measure anywhere from 0 to 180 degrees. If it was less than 90, it was acute. If it was more than 90, it was obtuse. If it was 90, it was a right angle. Anything more than 180 degrees, you just wouldn't measure it to be more than 180 degrees. You would just measure it going the other way around and measure it as less than 180 degrees. I'm here to tell you that's hogwash. You can measure an angle to any angle measure that you want. If you want it to be 181 degrees, then it's 181 degrees. If you want an angle to be negative, then it's negative. In trigonometry, it's useful to be able to describe angle measures based on the entire number line, positives and negative numbers. An angle can be any number that you can think of, positive or negative. It can be irrational. It can be rational. It can be whatever you want. But to keep track of it, we need to be able to have some standard position. So what we do is we measure an angle only in one direction. Whichever direction you measure it, that's the direction you're measuring it. Wherever you start, we call that the initial side. Wherever you end, we call that the terminal side. Now if we draw the angle in such a way that the initial side is the positive x-axis, we now have an angle in standard position. So any angle within the xy coordinate plane where the initial side is the positive x-axis is an angle in standard position. That terminal side then can be somewhere, anywhere in the xy coordinate plane. If we measure it counterclockwise, that is a positive angle. If we measure it clockwise, that is a negative angle. So we start at zero right here. Positive x-axis is zero. If we measure up, we're measuring in the positive direction. If we measure down, we're measuring in a negative direction. Now it's because of that positive versus negative direction that we can now clarify something that you probably never really understood. And that's how we name the quadrants. In English, we read from right to left, top to bottom. So it seems logical that if we name quadrants, we should name this one 1, 2, 3, 4. Yet the way we actually name the quadrants is we start in the upper right-hand corner, call that quadrant 1, and measure them counterclockwise. 1, 2, 3, 4. The reason for that is the angle in standard position. This is 0 degrees right here and then we measure in a positive direction counterclockwise. So this is 0 degrees, 90 degrees, 180 degrees. Now in geometry you couldn't go further than 180 degrees. That's because we didn't use a coordinate plane to keep track of things. But now that we're using a coordinate plane, if I'm going to go beyond 180 degrees, that's just a matter of keep going. So this one would be 270 degrees, and then all the way back around would be 360 degrees. So notice we measured counterclockwise, that's also the way we, me we label the quadrants. One, two, three, four. Now that's measuring in degrees. We could just as easily measure in radians. So this is still zero because that's our starting value, but it's not zero degrees, it's zero radians now. If I go all the way around, that would be two pi radians, equivalent to 360 degrees. If I go halfway around, Instead of it being 2 pi radians, halfway around would only be 1 pi radians. So pi and 180 degrees are the same location. Cut pi in half again, in other words going straight up, where 90 degrees was, half of 180 was 90, half of pi is pi over 2. 90 degrees is equivalent to pi over 2. So then where would this be if I'm going straight down? Well every 90 degrees is pi over 2. Therefore, this would be 1 pi over 2. This would have to be 2 pi over 2, which reduces to pi. Therefore, this would have to be 3 pi over 2. And of course, if I went one more tick, it would be 4 pi over 2, 4 pi over 2 reducing to 2 pi. So as long as you have a good understanding of fractions, radians are no big deal at all. That brings us to what we affectionately refer to as the unit circle. In the next section, we're going to be looking heavily at something called the 16-point unit circle. Now, the unit circle is a tool that we use, just like paper, pencil, and calculator, in order to evaluate certain types of functions, specifically trig functions. Even more specifically, trig functions at specific angles. There are 16 points on the unit circle that are get used over and over and over and over again. So those 16 points, I'm going to want you to memorize. Good news is that they follow 
patterns. Now, if you remember back to geometry, there was something called a 45-45-90 and a 30-60-90 right triangle. Those two very special right triangles that you probably spent a day and a half in in geometry and then didn't talk about ever again, we're about to start talking about them again. 30, 60, 90, 45, 45, 90 are crucial to our understanding of trigonometry. And it's crucial to be able to do trigonometry without the need of a calculator. So before the next lesson, I highly recommend that you look up a YouTube video on 30, 60, 90, 45, 45, 90 triangles to kind of review what those were actually all about. So, because those special triangles involve 30, 45, 60, and 90 degree angles, those are the angles that we need to get accustomed to on the 16 point unit circle. So, let's start with the easy ones, the 45 degree intervals. Obviously, we'd start at zero right here. Halfway through the first quadrant would be 45 degrees. The end of the first quadrant would be 90 degrees. Add another 45 degrees, we're up to 135. Add another 45, we're up to 180. And then 225. 270, 315, all the way back to 360. These are your 45 degree intervals, specifically 45, 135, 225, and 315. These numbers come up so often, you need to be familiar with them. If I say, hey, look at that 225 degree angle, you know automatically that that is the 45 degree angle in the third quadrant. We can also split it into the 30 and the 60 degree angle measurements. So this one right here would represent 30 degrees. This one would be 60 degrees. In the second quadrant, 90 plus 30 is 120. 90 plus 60 is 150. I could have also gotten that 150 simply by subtracting 30 from 180. So the 30 and the 60 degree marks are related to each other in that the 120 is 30 degrees off of 90. It's also 60 degrees off of 180. 150 is 30 degrees off of 180 and 60 degrees off of 90. So keep that in mind that the 30 and the 60 are very closely related to each other. Keep in mind also that 30, 60, 90 all come from the same triangle. If we go into the third quadrant, we'd up, be up to 210 and then 240. Fourth quadrant, 300 and 330. So here we have our 16 point unit circle in degrees. Notice there are 16 points along the circle that have significant degree measures that correspond to them. And keep in mind it's based on a pattern. We really only have a couple of intervals going around here. We have the 30 degree interval and the 45 degree interval. Every other angle is simply a multiple of either 30 or 45. So as long as you know that the first two steps are 30 and 45, you can get the rest of them simply by counting. If I start at 30, add 30, I get 60, add 30, I get 90, add 30, I get 120, add 30, I get 150, add 30, I get 180, 210, 240, 270, 300, 330, 360. I can do the same thing with 45. Start at 45, add 45, I get 90, and then 135, 180, 225, 270, 315, 360. As long as you know that it starts at 30 and 45, you can get the rest of the angles simply by adding or counting. So, when we convert to radians, you can either do this the easy way or the hard way. The hard way would be to do it all in degrees first, and then convert every single one of those degrees from degrees to radians by multiplying by pi over 180. Oh my gosh, is that a waste of time? Just count. All you have to do is count. We start at zero. All the way around is two pi. Halfway around is one pi. Half of that half in other words, halfway to pi is pi over 2. Again, just count. This is 1 pi over 2. This is 2 pi over 2. That means straight down would be 3 pi over 2. Again, 2 pi is also 4 pi over 2. It's just reduced. Just like before, we can do our 45 degree intervals first. Now remember, we converted 45 degrees to radians earlier, but I don't even really need to remember that. I just need to know how to divide. I started at 2 pi, cut it in half, I was at pi. Cut it in half again, I was at pi over 2. Well, if I cut it in half again, that would get me to the 45 degree interval. What's pi over 2 divided by 2? Well, that's pi over 4. So, if I want to get the rest of the angles, just count. This is 1 pi over 4, which means this one would be 2 pi over 4. 2 over 4 reduces to 1 over 2. This would have to be 3 pi over 4, 4 pi over 4, 5 pi over 4, 6 pi over 4, 7 pi over 4, 
8 pi over 4 brings us to 2 pi. As long as I know that the halfway through the first quadrant is pi over 4, I can get the rest of these angles simply by counting. 1 pi over 4, 2 pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, 4 pi over 4, 5 pi over 4, 6 pi over 4, 7 pi over 4, 8 pi over 4. Notice it's the odd pi over 4s that are actually your 45 degree intervals. 1, 3, 5, 7. Now, how do I get that 30 degree mark? Well, let's just go back to the pi over 2. To get from 90 to 30, all you have to do is divide by 3. If you cut it in half, you get pi over 4. If you cut it in thirds, pi over 2 divided by 3 would be pi over 6. So then to get the rest of the angles, or at least the rest of the 30 degree intervals, we just have to count. This is 1 pi over 6. This one would be 2 pi over 6. But 2 over 6 reduces to pi over 3. This would be 3 pi over 6. 3 over 6 is 1 half. This one would be 4 pi over 6. 4 over 6 is really 2 thirds. Then we would have 5 pi over 6, 6 pi over 6, 7 pi over 6, 8 over 6. 8 over 6 is 4 thirds. 9 over 6 is 3 halves. 10 over 6 is 5 thirds. 11 over 6, 12 over 6 is back to 2 pi. So notice my 30 degree and my 60 degree marks, 30 degrees is pi over 6, 60 degrees is pi over 3. There's a helpful way of remembering it. It's just the opposite way of you think that it should be. 30 degrees is pi over 6, 60 degrees is pi over 3. Notice as the angle gets bigger, the denominator gets smaller because that's how fractions work. Pi over 6, pi over 4, pi over 3, pi over 2. Also notice that the 30 degree angles are pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6, 30 degrees and 150 are 30 degrees up from the x-axis, 30 degrees down from the x-axis you have 11 pi over 6 and 7 pi over 6, 1, 5, 7, 11. Those are your 30 degree intervals. Your 60 degree marks, in other words 60 degrees above the x-axis or 60 degrees below the x-axis, 1 pi over 3, 2 pi over 3, 4 pi over 3, 5 pi over 3. Put it all together we have our 16 point unit circle in radians. So you need to be familiar with both degrees and radians. You will be quizzed on this unit circle. Basically I'll give you a blank one of these and say you've got five minutes go ahead and write down the entire 16 point unit circle in both degrees and radians. Your job is to go home and memorize this. Stop what you're doing, memorize it, and then continue. Alright, one more thing to talk about and that's coterminal angles. As I said before, angles can be measured up to any number that you want. You don't have to arbitrarily stop at 180 degrees. You don't have to arbitrarily stop at zero degrees. By considering angles in standard position, you can kind of think of an angle measure as a number line. But instead of it being a number line, it's a number curve, where zero is at your positive x-axis. If you measure up, you get your positive numbers. If you measure down, you get your negative numbers. So what that means is that you can describe a specific location with two completely different measurements. We call these coterminal angles. Two or more angles in standard position that share a terminal side. For example, 60 degrees. 60 degrees, if I start at zero right here, it's positive, so I'll measure up. It's less than 90, therefore it's going to be in the first quadrant. Here's 60 degrees, measured from the initial side, positive x-axis, to its terminal side in the first quadrant. Yet 420 degrees, 420 degrees would be again positive starting at the positive x-axis. I would measure around, this would be 90, then 180, then 270, then 360. 420 is still larger, so this is more than a full circle. To get to 420, I would actually have to go from 360 up another 60 degrees. So this would be the measure, this would be the location for 420 degrees. 60 degrees above the positive x-axis. Notice that both 60 and 420 have the exact same terminal side. For that matter, how about negative 300? Negative means I would start at zero and measure down. I would measure down 90 degrees and then down 180 degrees and then 270 degrees and it would be another 30 degrees before I got to 300. If it's another 30 degrees, that means it's also 60 degrees above the positive x-axis. All three of these, 60, 420, and negative 300, are coterminal because they all have the same terminal side. It's just how you measure them that changes. So notice the relationship, though, is simply turning around. If I'm staring forward and I turn all the way around, I am still staring forward. If I turn to the right or turn to the left, 
as long as I go all the way around, I'm still staring forward. All the way around is represented by a full circle. So if you're in degrees, if you add or subtract 360, you're still in the same spot. If you're in radians, if you add or subtract 2 pi, you're still in the same spot. So if I ask you to find a coterminal angle, it's just a matter of adding or subtracting a full circle. If you're in degrees, we use 360. If you're in radians, we use 2 pi. Now also, I want you to sketch the angle as well. Keep in mind, once you find both your positive and negative angle, all three of them are the same angle. They all have the same terminal side. So you can either sketch your angle first, if you know where negative 45 degrees would have to be, or you can sketch your angle last, if one of your coterminal angles might make it easier. It's really up to you. I'm going to go ahead and wait till last to do it. So let's look at this one together. I'm starting with negative 45 degrees. I want to find a positive and a negative coterminal angle. We'll start with the positive one by adding 360. Negative 45 plus 360 is 315. So 315 degrees is coterminal to negative 45. We'll find a second one by subtracting 360. If I start at negative 45 and subtract 360, I end at negative 405. So negative 45, positive 315, and negative 405 are all coterminal to each other. Now, let's not forget to sketch it. So I can either sketch based on the 315, based on the negative 405, or based on the ne original negative 45. I think either the negative 45 or the 315 should be obvious where which quadrant we're actually going to be in. Negative 45 just means starting at 0, measured down 45 degrees. Well, if I measure down 45 degrees, I'll end up in the fourth quadrant. Or 315, 315 is more than 270, yet less than 360. Therefore, it's more than straight down and less than straight to the right, so fourth quadrant. And that's all you have to do. There's my positive coterminal, there's my negative coterminal, and here's a sketch of the terminal side of the angle. All right, here's another one for you. Feel free to try it on your own, but since we switched from degrees to radians, we can go ahead and work this one together. Otherwise, feel free to ignore everything I'm saying and just do it on your own. So, 2 pi over 3, just like before, I'll start with my given angle, and I'll add and subtract a full circle. We're in radians now, so a full circle is not 360. A full circle would be 2 pi. But remember, this is written as a fraction. So instead of just adding 2 pi, I need to make sure that I have a common denominator. If the denominator is 3, 2 pi should become 6 pi over 3, because of course that reduces to 2 pi. So before I add, I need to make sure I pay close attention to the denominator. Essentially, all you have to do is double the denominator, and that's what's going to go up top. So 2 pi plus 6 pi becomes 8 pi. So 8 pi over 3 would be coterminal to 2 pi over 3. Let's do the same thing to get our negative. We'll subtract 6 pi over 3. 2 pi minus 6 pi would be negative 4 pi over 3. So now to draw it. Usually sketching is a lot easier when it's in degrees, but only because you're more accustomed to degrees. The more you practice with radians, the more likely you are to be able to look at 2 pi over 3 and say, oh, well, obviously that's in the second quadrant. But I don't expect you to be at that point yet. Eventually I do expect that, but right now I don't expect it. So it's simply a matter of realizing where 2 pi over 3 lies between the quadrants. Remember that this is 0, this is pi over 2, these are things that you should memorize at least. And what I do is I start by comparing 2 pi over 3 to 1 pi. 2 thirds is definitely less than 1, therefore it's definitely not in quadrant 3 or 4. So 2 pi over 3 is either in quadrant 1 or it's in quadrant 2. So now let's just compare it to 1 half. Is 2 thirds more or less than 1 half? Well, 2 thirds is more than 1 half, therefore I'm in quadrant 2. 2 pi over 3 is in the second quadrant. All right, here's another one for you. Give this one a try on your own. Hit play when you're ready. So we'll start with 7 pi over 5. We're going to add 2 pi since this is in radians. 2 pi, if I double the denominator, would become 10 pi over 5. So add it together, I get 17 pi over 5. To get my second angle, I will subtract and get negative 3 pi over 5. Next, let's figure out where 7 pi over 5 lies. So I'll start with pi. Is 7 over 5 more or less than 1? 
Well, since I know 7 over 5 is more than 1, I know it's not in the first or the second quadrant. So now the question becomes, where is 7 over 5 in relation to 3 halves? Is 7 over 5 more or less than 1 and a half? Well, just think of it this way. 3 halves, to get to 3, we're just taking the denominator, cutting it in half, and adding it. In other words, 2 plus half of 2 is 3. Well, what's 5 plus half of 5? Half of 5 is 2 and a half, so that would be 7 and a half. So 3 halves, 1 and a half, is actually 7.5 over 5. 7 over 5 is less than that, therefore I'm in the third quadrant. Just shy of the, third, of the fourth quadrant, but I am still in the third quadrant. All right, let's do one more. Negative 15 pi over 7. Give this one a try on your own. Hit play when you're ready. So we'll start with our given angle. We'll add 2 pi. In this case, it's going to be 14 pi over 7. So when I add it, I get negative pi over 7. Now, pay attention to the directions. Don't just go by rote memorization, do the steps that you're accustomed to doing, and then expect to get the right answer. Pay attention to the question. Pay attention to your answer. The question asks for a positive and a negative angle. By adding 14 pi over 7, it produced a negative angle because the angle I started with was so small, adding 2 pi once wasn't big enough to get into the positive angle measures. So I'm not going to add 14 pi over 7 and subtract 14 pi over 7 because that's just going to give me two negative angles. I need to add 14 pi over 7 again. Starting at negative pi over 7, let's add 14 pi over 7 and I end up with a positive angle, 13 pi over 7. So let's look at our quadrants, determine which quadrant this would be in. In this case, I think the negative pi over 7 would be the easiest one to sketch. Negative means I'm sketching down. 1 seventh is definitely much less than 1 half. So I know negative pi over 7 is going to be in the fourth quadrant. And that's all there is to radians and degrees. Uh, we need to be able to convert back and forth. We need to be able to find coterminal angles. Now keep in mind, I gave you an assignment in the last lesson to memorize your trig definitions and those reciprocal and quotient identities. Are they memorized? If not, you need to get moving on that. Also, on top of that, here's another reason why you should not wait until today to start yesterday's homework. On top of the trig definitions and identities, you need to be working on memorizing your 16-point unit circle in both radians and degrees. You will be quizzed on all of this in the future. And just for fun, by the way, pi is wrong. Did you notice how it took a full circle to get 2 pi? Why isn't it 1 pi? So then half a circle would be pi over 2 and a quarter of a circle would be pi over 4. Why is a full circle 2 pi and not 1 pi? Obviously 1 pi, P-I-E, is a circle, yet a circle is actually 2 pi, P-I. There's this interesting little debate that's going on in the mathematical community, and it has to do with the number pi, 3.14, versus the number tau. This is the Greek letter tau, which is actually defined to be 2 pi. So feel free to watch this short little video about the difference between pi and tau, and you can make your own decision on your own. Until next time.